Well, hello, everybody. My name is Gary Feldman. I'm president of U.S. Computer Connection, a managed service provider of IT services located here in Stanford, Connecticut. We're putting together this educational series, the Network Security Webinar, uh, today focusing on social engineering fraud. And we're doing this because while the information that we're going to be sharing with you might seem obvious to you, people are still falling victim to a lot of these scams. And we want to make sure we share this with as many employees as possible because they're your first line of defense to protect yourself against a lot of these scams. So here we go. So what is social engineering fraud? Social engineering, social engineering is not new, but the cyber thieves are getting much more clever and they figure out ways for you to give up confidential information such as your passwords or bank information. Security is all about knowing who and what to trust, knowing when and when not to take a person at their word. When to trust the person you are communicating with is indeed the person you think you are communicating with, when to trust that a website is or isn't legitimate, when to trust that the person on the phone is or isn't legitimate, when providing your information is or isn't a good idea. For example, it's much easier to fool someone into giving you their password than it is for you to try hacking their password. So these cyber thieves, find that it's easier to exploit your natural inclin inclination to trust than it is to discover ways to hack your computer. So some of the reasons social engineering threats work, well, we're helpful by nature. For instance, someone could simply pose as a senior vice president, call the company switchboard or a random employee and say, hey, my laptop crashed and I'm operating off my tablet which isn't configured for the corporate VPN. So can you provide me access now since I have a meeting in an hour and I need access to my email and presentation? So of course people wanna be helpful. They wanna be able to help them out and give them the information that they want. We're also curious beings. These bad guys want you to click on their hyperlinks or pictures. They use catchy subject lines to catch your attention, such as what is happening in the elections or a natural disaster that's going on or anything that'll pique your attention. And we're efficient multitask multitaskers and, and they know that. They know we're all busy and we're working on multiple tasks at one time, so they take advantage of that fact. So these messages may use your trust and curiosity. So the email may contain a link that you just have to check out because the link comes from a friend and you're curious. You'll trust the link and you'll click on it and now your computer is infected with malware so the bad guys can take over your machine and collect your contacts information or, or steal your password. But it may also contain pictures, music, uh, movie, documents, things like that, that has malicious software embedded in it. If you download the attachments, which you're likely to do since you think it's from your friend, you become infected. Now the criminal has access to your machine, email accounts, social network accounts, contacts, and the attack spreads to everyone you know. And that keeps going on and on and on. Here's a message from PayPal. But these messages may explain that there's a problem that requires you to verify information by clicking on the displayed link and providing information in their form. The link location may look very legitimate with all the right logos and content. And in fact, the criminal may even have copied the exact format and content of the legitimate site. Because everything looks legitimate, you trust the email and the phony site and provider what, whatever information the crook is asking for. These types of phishing scams often include a warning of what will happen if you fail to act soon. Because the criminal knows that if they can get you to act before you think, you're more likely to fall for their phishing scam. So back in 2014, the internet was flooded with nude photos of Jennifer Lawrence and Kate Upton, among others. These photos were stored on the celebrity cell phones and most people assume that there was a vulnerability that made it easy to hack Apple iCloud. But the reality was 
these celebrities received the phishing email and supplied the bad guys with their user ID and password. And the bad guys successfully hacked over 100 celebrity phones by sending emails that looked real. But only a couple of them stored nude photos on their phones, and I'm sure they won't be doing that again. We've all seen the IRS email scam, but the message may also notify you that you're a winner. Maybe the email claims to be from a lottery or a dead relative for the millionth person to click on their website. In order to give you your winnings, you have to provide information about your bank routing so they know how to send it to you or give you your address and phone numbers so they can send the prize. And you may also be asked to prove who you are, often including your social security number. People want what is offered and fall for it by giving away their information, then having their bank account emptied and identity stolen. You may also receive requests uh, for help from a large bank uh, that most people use. A lot of times they go after the big ones like Chase or Citibank or Bank of America. If you don't use any of those banks, then you'll likely ignore the email, but if you do, then you're likely to respond. So what you want to do is you never respond to emails like this. You always want to go directly to the company website to communicate. So here's something that we've been seeing a lot of, which is called CEO fraud, and it's becoming more and more sophisticated. What happens is the cyber thieves, the crooks, spoof or hijack the emails of the business executive or an employee. When they hijack, that means they were able to copy, get their password and log into their accounts and they could track what they're doing, who they're talking to, when they're going away on vacation. If it's spoofed, it's an email that looks like it's coming from them. And then they make requests, these bad guys. They're saying, hey, are you at your desk? I, I need to process a wire transfer. That's all it says. It's only asking for that. And then later in the day, it says, hey, what's going on with the wire? I, I need to know. I need to get it out. And they're just being very generic. And then it follows up with, hey, here's the wire transfer that I need. It's for $260,000 or it could be for uh, $500, whatever the dollar amount is. And here's the wire instruction. We're seeing people fall for this because they know that they need to get it done. They, maybe the CEO happens to be away during that time and email is the only communication that they have with them. The problem is that antivirus software spam filters do not block this type of emails. So that's a concern and that's why we're trying to educate employees. Just recently, Snapchat, which is a major media giant, and if you certainly don't know them, uh, I'm sure your kids do, their accounting department was recently targeted from what looked like their CEO, who asked an employee for payroll information. And the bad guys hit the jackpot when they received not only the payroll data, but social security numbers, bank details, and salaries. And this just happened recently. And an email would be as simple like this. Hey, um, can you send me uh, the list of, you know, of W-2 copy of, uh, of all employees' wages and tax statements for last year? So it's a simple request. People say, sure, let me get that over to you, you know, without talking. A lot of people don't use phones anymore. It's all gone through email. So what should you do? Slow down. Uh, there's always a sense of urgency, but make sure what you're doing is accurate. Do a little research. Research the facts. Be suspicious of unsolicited emails. Log on to the website. Make a phone call to verify that this information is real. You could delete any request for financial information or passwords. Anything that's asking for that information, just delete it. Those are all scams. Reject requests for help or offers to help, such as, I'm going to help you restore your credit or refinance your home or let me help you answer questions. And don't let a hyperlink control where you land. If you hover over a hyperlink like I am right now, what you'll find is that it may not take you where you think it's going to take you. This hyperlink happens to take you to www.youaregoingtobeinfected.com. I created that fake address, but that tells me that this hyperlink is really going to get me in trouble. This is, again, slow down. Let's take a look at where the hyperlinks take you. 
are they legitimate? If they are, then you could feel safe. If they're not, stay away from it. Email hacking is very rampant. Rampant. So just be very careful about all the links and the attachments. Check before opening them or downloading. Curiosity leads to careless clicking. And we're all curious about what's coming in within that email. And we want to look. We're all in a rush to take a look. Beware of downloads. If you're not expecting something, don't open it. Foreign offers are fake. If they say you've won a foreign lottery or the sweepstakes or money from an unknown relative is coming your way, it's fake. Sorry to say. Set your spam filters to high and also work with a company like ours that updates all your computers and servers through our programs called PCP and PCPE, updating antivirus, um, patching computers through Windows and third-party applications such as Java and Flash, and making sure you're protected. We also created this document for you, www.uscomputer.com slash SE advisory. And this is a social engineering advisory that explains to you what to look for. We encourage you to download this document and share it with your friends, your family, and all your employees at your office. This is an important document. It'll identif help identify and hopefully people will realize what to look for in an email to make sure the email is legitimate. If you go onto our websites, uscomputer.com slash events, you can see all upcoming events that we have. We put on events like this, as well as Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Office training. So keep an eye on that. And if you want to download the SE Advisory, Social Engineering Advisory document, uh, I've listed the address here again. We're located on 933 Hope Street in Stanford. Please call us if we can help you. Have a nice day.